I get asked, what do I think about the legalization of marijuana? And my reply is, I'm actually okay with it. If it's for medicinal purposes, that's fine. There are studies that prove that medical marijuana would be a great benefit to a lot of people. Cancer patients, people with rheumatoid arthritis. There's a whole list of different things that it'll help. If a cancer patient can be pain free with marijuana, why wouldn't we do it? Why would we subject people to more and more painkillers? I just don't, I don't understand why there would be an argument about it. There's a law enforcement group that is called um, LEAP. And it's Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. Look it up. It exists. What it is is a bunch of retired and active law enforcement officers, police officers, sheriffs, I think Corrections is in there. There's a couple police chiefs. They formed this group for the specific purpose of legalizing marijuana. The theory being that it will obviously empty out our jail cells. We've got way too many people in jail because of marijuana. Hey, it's natural. God put it on this earth. So, if it will keep people off of the harder stuff, if it'll keep kids from trying meth or crack, cocaine, even painkillers, Why all the heroin overdoses? Why such a huge heroin epidemic in this country? 95% of the heroin addicts in this country are because of pain medicine. So what happens, the government says, or I should say the doctor says, you know what? You don't need this anymore. I gotta cut you off. You can't have any more pain pills. So they cut them off. What happens? Now they can't get it. Unless they wanna go and find it on the street for $10 a pill They need to come up with something else. And you know, some of it is because of addiction. But some of it very well is because legitimately people are in pain. And the doctor cuts them off their pain pills. So what do they turn to? Heroin. I'm not telling you guys anything new. You guys know this. Maybe there's some people out there that don't. So now, 
the person who couldn't get the pain medication from their doctor anymore actually has an easier time of it. They don't run out of their medication early and then start going through withdrawals. They don't have to think of excuses or ways to try and get their prescriptions filled earlier than they're supposed to. They don't forge prescriptions. They don't have any of that problem. All they got to do is find somebody that can supply them with it. It's cheap. It's easy. It's also deadly. Oh, people die from pain pills. People overdose. Accidental overdose. Unintentional, whatever you want to call it. Because their body becomes... They hit a plateau. Like Their body becomes so used to the dosage that they're taking that they take an extra pill here, an extra pill there. Before you know it, they're taking... 10, 15, 20 pills a day to get that same feeling. Whether it be for relief or euphoria. And before you know it, they've taken a month's supply in a few days and they're dead. Heroin is really bad right now it's a really really severe epidemic we have so many overdoses in the area I'm in sure a lot of people are saved by Narcan but there's a lot that can't be saved the heroin is laced with fentanyl and they're calling it hot shots. It's a really hot dose of heroin because of the fentanyl. Fentanyl is some serious shit. There's actually officers who have almost died um, entering drug houses where they were mixing it where there was fentanyl laying there on a table and the table got kicked up or whatever in a scuffle and it went in the air. There's actually an article on it. I don't remember that where exactly it was, what department it was, but the officer almost died. It was actually, honestly, it was his fault. They did a drug raid. It was a huge drug house and um, they did recover a lot of drugs. They recovered stolen guns, a lot of money. But in his haste, he didn't realize that there was fentanyl on the table. And he flipped the table over during the search. And it ended up almost killing him. Two other officers in the room got sick. But sick, like, had to be treated at the hospital. But he was admitted, and I don't remember if he was on life support or not, but it was very serious. So thankfully, he survived. But it's an epidemic. You know what it's like to walk into, to get the dispatch from county emergency center you go to the house there's mom all hysterical and freaking out because her son's lying on the bathroom floor screaming you need to help him you need to help him help him and you walk in that bathroom you know there's nothing you can do he's laying there with the needle still stuck in his arm. 
cold. At that point, we can't save them. It's very disturbing to see things like that. It's very disturbing as a first responder to tell mom there's nothing you can do. Meanwhile, while you're waiting for the coroner to get there, I'm being blunt about this, guys. I mean, this isn't play TV. This is the real deal. Meanwhile, while you're waiting for the coroner to get there, trying to calm mom down, you're standing in the living room and you're looking at the family pictures on the wall. And you're looking at where her son played baseball or football when he was younger. Football in high school. A picture of him at his prom with his girlfriend. That's the kid laying in the bathroom. Just a kid. So I don't know what needs to be done to get a handle on this. Big Pharma, man, they got the politicians, they got government. They'll never ban it. They can't. It's big industry. And honestly, there's people that really need it. There's people that would probably take their own lives if they're in so much pain a day if they couldn't have the pain medicine. So this is where I come on a topic about marijuana. I tried it twice in high school. I was a football player, I was a jock. I wrestled a little bit, but, you know, it was going around the weight room in school. One time after school, well, actually it was during school, we had an assembly, and a couple of us skipped the assembly, and one of my friends brought out a bowl. I knew what it was. And he asked me if I wanted to try it. And I said no. So my friends are standing there and they're passing the bowl and then you know they kept bugging me and bugging me and I'm like alright I'll try one hit if it'll shut you up. So I took one hit. I didn't even hold it in long. I choked. I coughed. It did nothing for me. Absolutely nothing. I didn't feel any different other than my throat and lungs hurt because I was coughing on it. So that was the first time I tried it. A few months later, same type of deal. We're all hanging out somewhere. And uh, he asked me if I want to try it. And I said, to him, ah, for what? didn't do nothing to me anyway. He goes, what do you mean it didn't do nothing? I said, it didn't do anything. I didn't feel anything from it. He goes, well, here. Try this. This is different stuff. Okay. So I took a hit. Probably one of the scariest times in my entire life. I was walking up to the buses. They were parked. They were turned off. The bus drivers were outside. Bullcrapping. Just waiting for school to let out. For the kids to get on the bus. And I thought every one of those buses. Was trying to run me over. You know. It, it's. Okay to tell a story now. You know. I've even laughed about it. 
but I was freaked out. I felt sick all the way home on the bus. Everything was spinning so bad. I got home. My mother and my aunt were at the kitchen table because my aunt would come over to visit a lot. And I must have been like green or something. I don't know. But my mom says to me, what's wrong with you? You don't look good. I said, I don't feel good. And I said, I'm going to bed. She asked about dinner. I said, I don't even want dinner. I just want to go to bed. I don't feel good. I think I'm getting the flu. That's how I played it off as the flu. Well, I slept all night. My mother never found out. But the, I vowed that was the last time I would try it or ever do it. And it was. I've never touched it since. Obviously, during my career as a police officer, I can. But I wouldn't, even if I had the opportunity. So, when I saw the kid... I think it was a day or two later in school. I almost beat the shit out of him. And he said, what, that stuff worked for you? And he said, oh, it didn't work. It made me sicker than a dog and freaked me out. So I asked him why it was different. And the first time I tried it and it did nothing, it must have been like crappy homegrown or something. He told me he was homegrown. I don't know. Maybe he grew it himself from a seed. I have no idea. But it didn't do anything. That second time, it was called Red Hair Sense, and it was laced with cocaine. Yeah, I almost killed him. I almost beat the hell out of him. What if my... Just say... For, for argument's sake, what if my heart would have exploded from that cocaine? You know, pe it happens. People have tried cocaine for the first time ever. And it was too much and their heart exploded. Well, it didn't explode, but heart attack dead. What's that would have happened to me? I think I was 15 at the time. Can you imagine how my mother would have felt and my father? My family, my friends. How would my parents know that I wasn't a drug addict and I didn't do this stuff and it was the first time I tried it? They wouldn't. I'm dead. But they may have very well thought for the rest of their lives that their son was a drug addict. So where I'm going with this is if I can reach out to anybody, especially any of the younger people that are watching. Guys, I know you've heard it a million times. Don't do drugs. Don't let the peer pressure get to you. I'm telling you, please, think of your family, think of your friends. It's not worth it. If you feel you lack something in your life and you feel that you need to change something up, go talk to someone. Everybody has that good friend that they can sit down and talk to and tell them anything. Go see a counselor. The story I'm conveying to you is people that get hurt not only yourself but the people around you if something happens to you and you overdose like that young kid in his bathroom that could have been the first time he tried heroin I don't believe it was but it could have been What do you think his mother thinks? She's going to get over the sadness and the shock. She's going to sit down and she's going to think. 
How long has my son been a drug addict? Why didn't I see the signs? I should have paid more attention. Maybe I could have helped him. Kids, don't let that be your mother. Reach out. Talk to someone. If you're already doing drugs, please stop and get out. Life is too short. There's too much to see, too much happiness that awaits you in life to be gone so young. You want to get married one day. You want to have kids. Take your son to the park. Take him fishing. Take your daughter for walks. If you're doing it now, stop. If you're thinking of doing it, don't. That's all I got, guys. Good night. God bless.